it was originally because I had three guys here over the summer that we were like really, really rehabbing. And they were like in that like mid to end phase where we were like starting to get into throwing programs or like we were starting to do like high, like um, power development type stuff, you know, medicine ball, single arm plyometric type stuff. And it was like, okay, well, how do we know like when we can like pull the trigger to like actually bump them into throwing a ball? Hey, this is More Than Velocity. I'm Bart Pear here with Ryan Coton and Jordan Oseguera. And today we've got two great people joining us on the podcast from Stephen F. Austin University. We've got Kaylee Shores and AJ Van Valkenburg. Um, they're both trainers there. AJ is actually the director of sports medicine over there. And they've actually been using the Arm Care app and, uh, and have some really great feedback. And we wanted to get their opinion about it. So why don't you two just kind of introduce yourself, talk about what you do day to day there and um, how you first... Uh, found the arm care app. All right, well, I'll start. Um, my name is AJ Van Valkenburg, and I'm the director of sports medicine here at Stephen F. Austin State University in Nacogdoches, Texas. Uh, been here about uh, five years. It's going on my fifth year. Um, uh, football athletic trainer by trade. Um, worked with the Houston Texans for about six years uh, previous to this job. Uh, so I've been in a lot of different avenues and different areas where you have a lot of access to different things. Um, and so I run a staff here of about 12 athletic trainers, certified athletic trainers um, that work with across our 16 uh, sports. And, and we just came across uh, this arm care app and, and uh, we've, we've enjoyed it a ton. And uh, I introduced it to my uh, athletic trainer here, Kaylee Shores, and she'll tell, tell her side of it. Um, well, he went ahead and introduced me. Um, I'm Kaylee Shores. Uh, I've been here for about four years. Um, I'm our head baseball athletic trainer. I also dabble a little bit in football, so we kind of trade off in each other's worlds a little bit. Um, but yeah, we've been using arm care for about six-ish months now, uh, and we've loved every single second of it. Um, how we originally thought we were going to use it has been transformed uh, immensely from when I read we originally got into it. Um, I think that AJ actually found it on Instagram. Um, and like just pitched it to me one day. He sent me like y'all's promotional video and I was like, Hey, check this out. Let me know what you think about it. Um, and immediately I was like, okay, I'm in like, this is, this is something really, really cool. You know, I was looking at it from like a medical device, essentially, like we're going to be able to measure range of motion. We're going to be able to measure strength. And on top of that, it's going to have individualized plans for these athletes that like realistically I can make up, but like in all actuality, I can't implement them from day to day and be able to make the modifications that are needed. So that, I think that was the thing that I was the most excited about was being able to say, okay, we're going to be able to have this arm care system for our pitchers and like actually have some like growth within our players throughout the year and be able to track that and graph that. Um, so I think that's where we came from it from originally. You know, Jordan, Jordan knows kind of my story a little bit, but you know, I'm a dad of a, of a baseball player, but I'm a football athletic trainer by trade. Gotcha. Um, but so I kind of, I came across, uh, you know, you see a ton of stuff out there, ton of coaches on, on Instagram, ton of stuff out there. You're trying to sift through technology, through, you know, mechanics, you know, all this different stuff that's out there and this, you know, but as, as a director of sports medicine here, I'm constantly evaluating like different application pieces that we can, you know, number one, afford, right? Uh, mm -hmm. That's the big thing for us. We're at a smaller FCS school in football, division one and everything else. But, you know, we have our limitations. And um, so, I, you know, there's lots of things we can buy. There's Catapult. There's tons of GPS technology, uh, tons of, you know, huge biomechanics lab setups that we can set up. Um, but what can we implement as a staff and what can we afford as a staff. And, and so as I was going through a page of a guy that I follow, this uh, ex MLB player, Joe Bimel, um, yep. he, um, I've followed him a long time. And like, he makes sense on a lot of the stuff that he talks about pitching wise, and, you know, just his struggles and, you know, the ups and downs of his career. And so he's really authentic. And so he was really endorsing this kind of beta arm care product. Um, and, and so then I, as I started to do some research into it, I realized how like significantly user friendly the application was. And, you know, my background is, you know, I was with the Texans for about six, seven years. Um, and that was all that I tried to do when we 
We're evaluating because we had blank checks, right? We could do whatever we wanted to do, how we wanted to do it, but it all came down to application. Can we get the players? Do we have the staff to execute it? And I knew what we have here, right? We've got a baseball athletic trainer who (laughs) dabbles in football, and we've got a football athletic trainer who dabbles in baseball as a side hobby. And um, so once we came across the app, you know, I started looking into it and I was like, I really think this is something we can do. You know, and so called up Jordan and I said, well, what's our price point on this? You know, like I'm thinking 2000 bucks a piece, you know, I don't know what. And it was pretty affordable. I told Jordan, I think I told, told Jordan, I said, y'all need to up the price point on this. And so you originally got this focus on return to performance in baseball, correct? Yes. So we had a rash, I would say, you know, just like anything in Major League Baseball, Minor League Baseball, anywhere um, pitching is the name of the game, right? I mean, you either have pitchers or you don't have pitchers. You can have a lot of hitters. You can have some great defensive shortstops and second baseman and all that kind of stuff. But if you don't have pitching, you're probably not going to win. And I noticed um, when I got here, uh, we're a smaller school. And so we've got a lot of transfers. We've got a lot of JUCOs. We've got a lot of kickbacks. And so those guys are coming in with a little bit of tread on the, on the, you know, a little tread that's worn off a little bit. They've got a little bit of uh, mileage and, or they're guys who are playing above their level, right? Guys that, you know, are, are, have been pushing really, really hard to get to a certain velocity and they've just, they're just killing themselves to, to make it to that level. And um, we have had a lot of rash of, we had had a lot of rash of, you know, flexor strains and Tommy John and labral tears and rotator cuff tears to really good pitchers, really, really fantastic pitchers, but had a little bit of tread that needed to be fixed. And that's where I said, you know, dang it, I want to win for this coach. I want this coach to win. And he, and he starts off hot. You know, he looks good. Everything looks great in fall ball. And then it seemed like, up, uh, you know, Right at right when we'd get through non-conference play, boom, we'd lose a pitcher. You know, we'd lose two pitchers. We'd lose three pitchers. We probably had, you know, five or six Tommy Johns since I've been here. And I was looking forward to trying to figure out, number one, I set a, a goal of mine was I know that we needed people. And so we hired Kaylee. Um to be the full-time baseball athletic trainer. That was the first thing that we needed to do is we had to have someone who was invested in our program, right? Prior to that, it had always been kind of a reoccurring intern, graduate assistant position. So there's no no true investment. So we got our our athletic department to buy in to her as a a practitioner. Um, And then once I had that in place, boom, now I feel like I can go out and like, dabble in some more stuff. I have someone who can execute this kind of uh, style and she's just the the perfect person to do it. Very, you know, analytic, um, very um, meticulous in what she does. And this app just spoke to me. It said Kaylee Shores, (laughs) you know, it said, it said, this is, this is what we need to be able to figure out how do we bridge the gap between our conference opponents, our non-conference opponents, how do we stop these injuries from happening um, that are happening in youth baseball as a, as a, yep. as a father of a pitcher happens all the time. My son got injured. He's fine now, but it's uh it's just one of those things where you see it happening all the time, 13 years, 14 years, 15 years old. And this just spoke to me, like there's a billion things out there and this spoke to me. And so then I, I shot it to her and she took, she took off. Yeah, like I think our original conversations about it, like in the rehab and our turn to play, like it was originally because I had three guys here over the summer that we were like really, really rehabbing. And they were like in that like mid to end phase where we were like starting to get into throwing programs or like we were starting to do like high like um, power development type stuff, you know, medicine ball, single arm plyometric type stuff. And it was like, okay, well, how do we know like when we can like pull the trigger to like actually bump them into throwing a ball like we were doing like constraint throws or weighted ball like um we just talked about them a second ago um weighted ball holds like doing things like that but like when can we actually pull the trigger and you know 
this it came into our lives like the like perfect timing because it was as these guys were getting into that phase and we were able to show like okay your balance is not where you're at like and so that, that's where everything kind of originally started and where we originally started piloting everything um but then i think we really saw it start to grow after that and we we, we originally had the plan of like okay well we have other athletes you know football players who have shoulder surgery you know it's able to be a piece in that for us too, to have those, those metrics that we need to be able to hit before we start to progress them into their return to play. Well, and, and, and something that we found is that, you know, as a, as a physical therapist, athletic trainer, whatever you want to call yourself, as you're taking someone through a rehab, especially a shoulder, and you don't realize how much you have to do to get a shoulder back to return to play at that high level, to be able to pitch, to be able to really pitch. I don't even think I knew, and I'm 20 years into this thing and have dabbled a lot in baseball. I don't know enough to know, right? And I need this technology to tell me because once we get done with the surgery and we get past the post-operative phase and we get them strong and they look strong, all of that looks great. But we, we had had multiple guys that were coming off of Tommy John that ended up with a rotator cuff string, that ended up with a latch string, that ended up with these different things. And this was this was the golden piece. The key for me was how do we, before, because the, the physicians will give you their quote unquote throwing program, return to throwing progression, but it doesn't tell the full story, right? It just yeah. tells me that they got out to 120. It just tells me, but what was the quality of that? Right. Each and every day that they're going through their rehab, what qualities are we gaining? What adaptations are we gaining through the rehab? And can we see it? Can we actually quantitate that? And that's for us what arm care is for us. You know, that's what we that's where I just took off on. And I was Mm -hmm. like, man, we got to we got to stop having the injuries because I've said it here. uh, The only athletes that we have had since I've been here that have had a re injury after surgery are our baseball pitchers. And, and I said, okay, if we're, we're doing great on everyone else's return to play, how do we fix that issue? And really we, we said, we didn't really feel like we had a great return to play strategy Mm -hmm. for our upper extremity. And this is where we said, we've got a great lower extremity return to play. How do we create this metric that says, okay, they're hitting these numbers. Now, how do we move forward? And now that we have it, I don't know what I would do without it. <laughs> I'm a little dependent on it now. <laughs> That's kind of similar for, for me and Ryan with dynamometry <laughs> yeah. is once we started using it, you don't have to guess anymore. You know exactly where a guy's at. You can make your adjustments. You know when to increase throwing, decrease throwing. You know how to you know communicate with your ATs, your strength coaches. It just makes your day. If it saves you 30 minutes a day, that's always a good start. Absolutely. You know, what, one of the things I just want to jump in, um, you guys are really leading the charge. And this is where I see sports medicine going from an evidence-based practice to a practice-based evidence, you know, offering where you guys are taking data. And it's not just that you're being informed, you're using it to lead your programs and you're developing such deeper insights in terms of what are you doing with your players. And and I, I am so... Uh, aligned with what you guys are saying. It's not just isolated to your school about re-injuries in baseball. This is happening everywhere. Um, I was fortunate to be part of a group to publish a study to show how much uh, major league teams have repeat injuries. And they, they, you know, they happen from the lower body as well. We're talking about the arm. But one of the biggest issues is the progression in the throwing programs. And then you guys are using you know, our tool, like a thermometer to know when the athletes are ready for different phases. If we're not doing that, even if the athlete has an adductor strain or hamstring injury, our progression and getting them back to being on the mound could expose them to risks if we don't know where their shoulder strength and their grip strength are at. And, um, you know, this is just music to my ears. I'm, I'm dialed in with what you're saying, because this is the model. You guys are the model in which we're trying to, um, to build you know, our communities around and our initiatives around is that you don't look at this as like you're taking over your particular skill set, your art, 
this is enhancing, you know, the feel you have with your athletes and your program direction. So, I mean, it, it's amazing um, what I'm hearing from you guys. I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah, what's the uh, reception been with the players? And I apologize for you know losing my voice. I was actually in Texas this last week, as if the armadillo races, you know, getting into it and voice a little worn out. Jesus. Pretty common, I guess, in Texas is armadillo races. My wife's from Houston, and she's like, "Yeah, that's normal. I don't know what what you're so shocked about." But what's the uh, what's the reception from the players been? Um, I think the biggest thing is them being able to see numbers. Like, obviously, like they can always like you know, they can subjectively go through things, but them having like the objective data and like the numbers in front of them to show like what I'm doing is paying off has been really, really um, successful with them from what I can tell. And they're being able to see like how their numbers are tying in to where they're throwing schedules at too. Like if I see that I went out and I threw, you know, if I threw 60 plus pitches, you know, very, very early on in the fall and the next day my numbers were down by, you know, 15, 17, 20%. Well, I can see why, you know, and they're able to look at it and they're able to make their own inferences by this point too. like, OK, my numbers are down this day. Well, yesterday, whenever I went home, I didn't do this, this and this. And I didn't you know, my water intake wasn't where it needed to be or, you know, my nutrition levels aren't where they were or they can see based on their performance. You know, my sleep wasn't where it was, you know, all the different factors that can go into it. Um, I think that that's been the coolest thing is that they've started to add their own piece in. They're saying okay, I see where it's at. Like at the beginning, it was kind of like a trial of like, what is this? How does it feel? Like, how do I add myself into this, you know, type of deal. So I think them actually having the buy-in to it now and seeing this, like the actual outcomes that they can have from it and like the little pieces that they can toy around with has been the coolest part to watch from what I can tell. And, and I think, you know, obviously I'm just an observer because I don't work with her 50 guys every single day. Um, but I've seen a less overall fidgety pitching staff. You know, you've got your pitchers that are supremely dialed in to their shoulders. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems as though they have an ownership piece because of the app, because of the daily testing. So all of this kind of like worrisome nature that they have as they're going through their fall progressions and their bullpens and, and stuff like that, they have this outlet to be able to say, I don't feel good. I, um, I, I use my arm in a certain amount of, you know, load or, or I just didn't feel right here, there, or wherever. And they've got someone monitoring that every single day. So it takes that pressure off of them as an athlete because a lot of them have a hard time like verbalizing that or communicating that to an athletic trainer or to a pitching coach or to whoever. And so for us, and, and she'll get into this later, but as, as she's evaluating the data every day, we're making wanted changes to their load and what they're doing every single day before they ask, which is awesome. And so the, um, the players just have seen, I, I feel as though they have seemed a little bit more at ease about what they're doing and that they're being taken care of as a collective group, but as an individual at the same time. And they know we've got a stake in it through the app um, to, to make sure that they're not being overworked, that they're not being, you know, they can see it. They can see the load that they're entering in. Um, and then we're making changes based off of it because a lot of athletes hate it when something's introduced but you don't actually do anything with it, right? There's tons of that going on across all le all levels, all leagues. You're, you're exp spending so much money on so much technology, but then you don't do anything with it. Well, we've actually found something that we are doing something with, whether it's small on one day or large on another day, it's been very, very receptive to, to watch the athletes change their mentality. Mm -hmm. And I think they love seeing like the strength that they've gained throughout the year as well. My guys love crossover symmetry now. They're like, it gets me so fired up before I ever start to throw. Um, and I think the other cool thing is like they're becoming educated on like what their actual arm care needs to be and like the like specific exercises. So like a lot of my guys come from a JUCO and like all they know is reverse throws and banded pull aparts. And they're just sitting here doing this all day. Like it's cool to see that they're actually adding in some of these specific pieces and that they're actually taking care of their arms now and they're becoming educated. So like, that's like every athletic trainer's dream. Like they don't have to come with to me for every little thing. Now they like know the little fine tuned things that they need to work on. And I think that's been something for us that we've 
we've had a mantra here is that we want to create functional athletes. We want to create athletes that know how to take care of themselves. We want to give them ideas. We want to give them concepts. We want to give them, um, you know, processes that allow them to do what they love. They don't need to rely on, you know, Kaylee or myself to stretch them out or get them feeling good. We want them to have that process. And I think through arm care, it's, it's educated them, but also given them a piece, like Kaylee said, on how to be more functional, how to, how to figure out themselves so that they can get better and really just work on their craft, figure out their pitch grips, all those different things, instead of trying to figure out how to get warmed up properly. And I mean, even I've said to Jordan, like, I feel like I know what I know, but I don't know enough. Right. And so this is, this is educating all of us, you know, and the things that we can do better. And now we get to spend more time on how to be better at rehab, like how to make sure their, you know, their, their shoulder is repaired correctly because we've handled all the prep work. We've handled all the stuff that they're going to get into. They know what, when I say, go do these 10 exercises, boom, they've, they've, they've mastered that because that's part of their day to day. So amazing. Yeah. Everything just sounds wonderful. I mean, that's the reason why we created it in the first place. How did you educate the coaching staff about what you were planning to do with this and how has that evolved? A lot of bartering, a lot of bartering. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I'll say like, I talked about how, like originally whenever we had talked about it, it was going to be like, I had it from like a medical standpoint, obviously range of motion, strength, you know, and then it has a specialized uh, programs to help fill in the gaps and address the deficiencies. And originally whenever I presented to my head coach, you know, he, he loved the idea. I also sent him the promotional video and he was like, this is great. I'm all in. Let's talk about it next week. Well, whenever we met about it, you know, I continued to present it that way. Um, and, you know, we talked about little ways in which we could integrate it and what it actually looked like throughout the year. Um, but I think that we had like barely even touched the surface of what we could do with it. Um, so at that point in time, we, you know, he was like, go ahead and here's the credit card, go and buy it. Let's get it. Let's get all the guys on board with it. I want to get the guys as strong as we can. Okay. That's perfect. Yeah. His, his thing every fall is let's just get the guys as strong as we can. Um, and so you got Ryan fired up again. I'm ready. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and so, you know, he was, he was on board with it. He was like, Hey, like he would check in with me every, every week or so. Like, especially when he would see the guys testing out at the field and everything like, Hey, are you liking it? Like he thought it was like very driven towards me, which is fine because it's my world and they're just living in it. Um, (laughs) Um, but I remember like the exact moment whenever, like I saw my head coach buy into it, we were actually, um, we were sitting behind home plate. We were watching live at bats. Uh, this was probably early, early October. Um, and I had actually missed the first day that we had done live at bats. So this was our second day of doing live at bats. And he was talking about, um, a certain guy's performance, um, and how he was like, man, on uh, Wednesday, whenever he threw, he was just not throwing very well. He kind of like crap, blah, 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 blah. But today he's throwing lights out. And I had my tablet pulled up um, on the coaches portal at that time. And I was looking at it and I was like, well, it's probably because the strength was down that day. He was like, huh, kind of went on. And then the next guy came up and he was like, hey, this guy is looking like crap today. Like, what is wrong with him? Like, you know, this is not who this guy is. Blah, 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 blah. Like, can he not be consistent? And I was like, well, how did he look on Wednesday? He's like, oh, he looked really good. And so like, well, his strength is down today. And like, that's when it like, it clicked for him. And he was like, okay. He was seeing like the correspondence from like the strength measures to the actual performance measures and how they were tying together. And I think that's when he really, really bought into it. And that's when he was like, okay. And so like every guy that would come ask about like what their strength looked like. Um, and I remember, so we meet every Monday. So this would have been on a Friday, whenever this is going on, on Monday, whenever we met, he was like, Hey, like, every week I want you to give me a report and I want it to look like this. I want to have these different type of measures on it. That way, you know, I know what we're looking at each week. Perfect. Sounds good. Um, so that's kind of when he really started buying into it. And I'll, um, I don't know if we want to go and touch on kind of like how we utilize all the data and everything right now, or I can probably save that for a little bit later. Um, but he started asking for metrics that he wanted for how it was going to pay off for him and how we could utilize it in the spring, you know, with starting pitchers versus relieving pitchers and, you know, our testing frequency and all those type of things. I think we just need to get into it because I don't think Ryan could wait much longer. Yeah. I know (laughs) Kaylee sent me a couple pretty cool, cool graphs that she's uh, put together and stuff like that. I don't know if you want to share those or not, but. Um, let me make sure I can, yeah, she's got some really cool stuff that she sent over. So, 
yeah, I don't know if you have it on your computer, you can share or not, but she, she's a geek, man. She loves, she loves to figure it all out. And, uh, you know, she's put a lot of time and effort in, into trying to, trying to take the metrics that obviously we, we can get, get off the app, but then trying to put it into, you know, what a coach is looking for, you know? Yeah. Because we're, you know, she's able to use it, you know, from a reporting standpoint um, on, on just like, ba- you know, basically an overall accounting of what they look like for the entire fall, you know, so that they have kind of this report card that uh, allows for them to see, you know, where they were at, where they went, where they came from um, and what they need to improve on. This, this is just such elite communication. Um, you know, how you guys deal with the players, how you guys deal with your coaches. I mean, that was the, the beauty I thought when I first saw this device is how well communication can happen around one tool. You know, it's not just a sports science tool. It's not just a coaching tool. It's not just a medical tool. It's not just a strength and conditioning tool. There's so many people that are stakeholders in this. And you guys are giving like the living proof for what I always believed. I, I hadn't heard this really from our customers until now, where it's just eye-opening to me how well integrated, you know, you guys all are around the product. It's fantastic. Well, to me, it's if you want to be integrated, right? And so I think this gives you a reason to have another conversation with um, with coaches and, and pitching coaches and strength coaches. It gives you a, a, another data point to be able to, to, to uh, correlate together, um, to be, you know, to, to have that holistic look uh, as far as each one of those groups working together in unison. This just uh, provided that. And I think that, you know, prior to this fall, you know, there, there are silos, right? You know, you, you know, coaches, coach, pitching coaches, help pitchers, trainers help with injuries. And that's, that's what they do. Right. And strength coaches get them strong. And, and, and it, even though you're supposed to be working together, you're kind of siloed up at times, um, whether that's right, wrong, or indifferent. But I think that this, um, this app due to its simplicity. And I say that, you know, as like, awesomely as possible because mm-hmm. it's so simple um but it allows for data extraction to get as crazy as you want to get and and it allows anybody who has a vested you know interest in the athlete to have that conversation to continue to build that relationship and to to work together as a team amazing um, so I'll go ahead and touch on this chart that I had shared with Jordan last week. So this is my um, fall summary report. So this is just my team average one. This is what I'll use as my example whenever I have um, my conversations with all my guys and do my uh, presentation um, with the actual uh, pitching staff. Um, so up here at the top uh, is just a chart. So on each of the individual guys chart, it'll have their own graph. Uh, and they can see where they line up within their trend lines based on the team averages. So here on the left is just the raw data uh, so that they have the dates in which we tested and then the team average that day where it says NA here, it would have the guy's name um, and then with his respective um, strengths for that day. So just looking at total strength on that. Um, And then so a lot of guys, I think the one that I actually shared with Jordan is a guy who his numbers did not have a whole lot of similarity within his team and his trend line looked um, very flat, I would say. Um, But I can also correlate that with an injury that he had as well. Um, And then so right below that we have, um, let's see if it'll zoom in a little bit. So these are uh, just a chart to show total strength so they can see their current, their average, and then their best of each individual respective thing. Uh, We can look over here on the right to see uh, range of motion, uh, their current, their average, and then um, the norms. And then right here is kind of like their fall snapshot of kind of where they hang out. So on this line where it has like all the little like just dashes, it would be where the guy's individual data is at with his name and all of his reports. Um, so on here, you can see their first exam versus their best exam versus their last exam and their average strength. And then right here, it gives a percentage of their strength gains. Um, and I, th- I just thought it was a really good snapshot for them to have to be able to see how much strength they actually gain throughout the year. Um, and then over here, it would have their key metrics in which I'll just add it in, which I absolutely love. I no longer have to spend hours um, <laughs> doing my own <laughs> spreadsheets and data collection. Um, it just does it for me now. So that way they can see where they're at. Um, and if there is any type of like the watch or the warning signal, I went ahead and color coded it on here. 
Um, and then right down below is that um, just a fine tuned um, snapshot of that arm strength and percentage of body weight and where they need to focus their gains at um, current and then based on the normative data right below it. And then these are just some um, little tidbits for them, for them to be able to see the normative um, numbers for that shoulder balance, arm strength percentage, and then uh, that SVR, and then just some little information for them to have too. Wow, that is, that is impressive. That is great. It's It summarizes everything beautifully. And the player, this is what I love about it, is that the player has you know a, a deep understanding of the information. I mean, it it's cool that us, you know, we're in the field, we're in the high performance field, and this makes intuitive sense to us. But I love that the player is being educated and they understand what those numbers mean. It's like, I go to my doctor and, uh, you know, he tells me at the beginning, he's like, your cholesterol's up, your cholesterol's down, whatever it is. Finally, he tells me what the ranges are, mm -hmm. you know, and what they mean. And now I have to think in my mind, it's like, well, I, I got to shoot for this. I got to stop eating red meat, you know? I, and sounds like players, a bad life choice. Yeah. And the players and the players now have this in their mind as being like, you know, right now I'm really like I'm ER strong. My IR is really weak. I got to start to, to, to fix that. You know, I need to get to that one-to-one. -one. Like th this is where we want to get to is that people have a common language and the players have a common language. They know that, you know, as a heuristic, if you want to make it simple, you need to have 20% body weight strength on everything, you know? That, that's a, a good uh, goal to shoot for. So it keeps the athlete um, really engaged and really focused on the numbers. And, you know, I'm a strength coach pedigree and people get excited over max squats, max bench, max deadlift, all these kinds of things. But you guys are taking it to a level that I think, you know, it fits your model of this functional athlete where you're looking at, you know, we're looking at the throwing arm. Like that, that's the essential piece. That's to deliver the ball fast you know, accelerating the arm and to prevent injury. And when people are in a position like you guys are to educate, get the athletes gamifying our training and saying, you know, we really want you to set PRs on rotator cuff strength and grip strength. I, I just think the baseball world is going to be a healthier and a, a higher functioning place. So that was impressive to see. Yeah. A lot, a lot of the issue I see with just traditional baseball is arm strength has always been, well, how hard do you throw? or how far can you throw the baseball, or what's your pop time is a catcher. But just like someone who sprints fast doesn't necessarily have strong ham hamstrings, someone who throws hard doesn't have a strong arm. So it's good to be able to quantify that. You were talking about the SVR, and I know these are some of the things, like in the one you showed me, yeah, the guy's strength was down a little bit, but now he knows where he needs to go. He might feel like he's, he's in a good spot, but even based on that team average, he's not where he needs to be. So it's giving them tangible targets – to start reaching for. But even, even from my standpoint, just learning that even though your strength's down, you know, just working with you, Jordan, um, even though your strength's down doesn't mean that you're bad, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. mean that there's something wrong with you. It just means that you need to do something about it, right? You need to lighten your load or you, or, or you've, you've had some great, you, you feel good strengths down, but your adaptations are going up. You know, and so you're seeing some positive results. It doesn't mean that it's all all bad. It's just giving you that data so that you can make some actionable uh, choices, you know, going forward. And I think that's where, you know, we we all rely as, as coaches and even trainers at times. I tell my staff, you know, I just have a gut instinct on this guy making it or not making it or whatever. And, and uh, we need to stop relying on gut instincts, be able to take that data, make some, you know, some educated decisions to try to help out, you know, with, you know, the, the chance and the luck of, of sport. I, I had a quick question for you guys now, now that, it, and, and this was burning in my mind, now that it's Christmas break, you know, and the, the players I'm assuming are not with you. How, how are you, what, what's the, the athlete management process that you guys are going to go through in evaluating them, either being that they're away or when they come back? I'd be curious about that. Um, so while they're away, they have like their pitching coaches put them on a throwing progression that they need to do, you know, just maintain where they're at um, over the next couple of weeks until we see them back in January. Um, but whenever they return, the plan is for us to go ahead and have a full test on them the exact same day that they get back. And then based off of that, we'll make decisions on, you know, just overall throwing programs uh, based on those exams and where where's our weak points? You know, where do we need to do? What do we need to do in the weight room and go from there?
because we will have a little bit of time before we ever start doing anything, um, you know, full team wise. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, it, I, it sounds like we're very similar. My experience in pro baseball, I, I'm always worried about early season because you have these breaks, you know, and I, I'm hoping that the world gets to a point where, you know, if you're a throwing athlete, you have one of these. You know, can you imagine that the athletes are away from you and you don't you don't have any gaps in your data? You know, they're they're at home, they're testing, your pitching coach is talking to them, saying, Hey, we need to modify here, change the mileage on them, you know, their workload levels, and you guys stay up on it and you know how the training programs have to pivot. I mean, the conundrum that we have in baseball is that they have, they have their throwing load and they have their training load and strength. And over the course of the season, it's like, it's like a volume mixer. You got to dial up one, you got to dial down the other, but it's hard to know in these breaks where to do the dial. And it's good that you have an action plan when they come back to do the assessment and figure out how you're ramping them up. Because I think you guys play, is it, is it early February or late February? Is that when the season starts? February 18th, I think is our first Yeah. Time. Yeah. So, you know, I would always hold my breath when spring training came because I had no, first of all, I had no idea, you know, how they were training. I was calling uh, coaches. If they weren't using our program, I knew if they were using our app, what they were doing when I was, when I was overseeing strength and conditioning, but I was calling all these coaches that they're working with privately and they didn't have the assessment criteria to give me that information back. So the beauty of it is like now the player can own that. The player can be in charge of keeping you guys informed. And, and that's, you know, that's where I, I hope the world goes to in college. I mean, I'm listening to what you guys are saying in pro baseball, you lose a couple pitchers to injuries in minor leagues. You just move some in, you know, they kind of fit in. Sign a free uh, agent. Yeah. You sign Whatever a free you agent. Do. I got no idea what you do at college. That's even more concerning to me than pro ball. It seems even more stress ridden because, you know, if you lose your, you lose three guys in a season, where you're counting on, let's just say it's your Friday, Saturday, Sunday starters. I mean, that's the season. Yeah. Well, and I, I, you know, we talk about going on long breaks and everything like that. Like I wish we would have had this this time last year because obviously with COVID and everything, after we broke for Thanksgiving break, we didn't see our athletes again until middle of January. And to know, you know, where were they at whenever they came back in? Because I lost probably five or six guys very, very early on in the fall. And I think that put us a little bit behind, but, you know, and then we, throughout the season, we were, we went to playing four game sets instead of three game sets because, you know, we kind of eliminated most of our midweek games so that we could increase that on our um, weekend sets because we didn't have control over what those midweek, you know, all the testing stuff and everything that went into it like that. So I wish that we would have had it, you know, last year, because I think oh, man. managing four game sets was really, really hard. You had to be yeah. very strategic on how you manage your bullpen and like just, you know, what I was doing on the road in terms of treatment and doing everything I could, like, I think having this in my back pocket would have been day and night different. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys yeah. go a single, a double and a single, a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or how'd you guys do that? Yeah, it was single. Miserable. Oh, it was, that's intense. That's like, awesome. that's like travel baseball right now. Yeah. With the little league guys, it's like, you know, it, it, it's almost like we think that these guys are a PlayStation game, you, you know, that they're, yeah. we, we can, we can just sub them in and out. And the, the, we, we just don't know the green bar. We don't know how much energy level they have, how much, you know, how much uh, health they have. Um, that would have been really effective for a schedule like that to know when your relievers are good. I mean, that's how we utilized it at times in, in uh, major league baseball, when we had to have guys go up back to back to back three times in a row, we had to check them and see on that day, you know, 72 hours from uh, their first test where their arm strength was at to know whether the athlete could be even effective as a pitcher. So let alone injury risk, can this athlete help us in games? Or are they going to be significantly impaired? So that's crazy. Well, I think, I think also, you know, some of the reports that she uh, just helped or just showed you guys um, have also been helpful from an accountability standpoint. You know, it's, it's, it's allowed for us to, you know, provide an example, number one to the player, you know, how much are you really doing? You know, um, we've all been around athletes that are fanatical about their prep, but there's only like one or two of those, right? There's, there's not 25 of them. 
Yeah. Right? 25 pitchers. You're not going to find 25 fanatics about yeah. their arm care or their health or their nutrition or their sleep or whatever. And so to be able to front and center, show them their accountability, what they're doing, but through that accountability, be able to create habits, right? We're just trying to create creatures of habit. Uh, but then at the same time to be able to educate them, because as much as they think they know, they really don't know what they're doing, right? They're just doing crazy stuff. And so um, if we can create that habit while they're here, then they feel like they've lost a piece. Like, what am I doing for the next four weeks? Oh, well, here's what I should be doing. This is what I should do. And then they get into that habit and that rotation of, of doing their arm care properly. Um, hopefully that sets us up so that when we do go back in in January to retest, they're not starting over from scratch, you know, starting over from, from zero, they have a base foundation, uh, that hopefully even if they just did 50% of it, you know, at least starts them off in a better spot so that we're not having to, um, have, you know, early season injuries or having to wait a lot longer to ramp them up. Exactly. Yeah. And it gives you that understanding, like for me, and I've said it before, when I coached in college, my most stressful month was January because all my guys came back. and It was always my Friday night starter who did nothing over the break. And you're just like, oh, gosh, this is not good. We haven't built up to like 70 pitches at the end of the fall. And now we're right back down to 10, you know, so <laughs> this at least gives you the ability. If you test them when they come back, you know, are we, we hitting the accelerator or do we got to ease up to 60 on this? I think one thing too with the with the app, just thinking of the functionality of it and the and the preparation. You know, you can evaluate in my mind. I don't know if Jordan sees it differently, but what I would look at is I would look at the first inning velocities for a lot of our athletes in pro ball. And that would kind of determine, you know, how well our athletes prepared. Because if they were the type of athlete that were really low in the beginning of games and around mid-game, they start to increase their velocity. We're we're not kind of we're not coming out of the gates flying. So that's one of the things too. I'm, I'd be interested to see as you guys go on, you know, when the athletes are gaining strength and they're improving their preparation, if you're starting to see, you know, those, that, those first innings that the velocities are really high, you know, where they're, they're establishing a lead. We had a lot of athletes that if they didn't throw very hard in the first inning, they were getting hit around and then they would get better. They would actually pitch better. Um, and we look at the amount of throws that they made per inning later on in the game. So they were getting batters out more often later in the game. So I just think there's an advantage in evaluating that initial, you know, how the athlete comes out of the gate for your team. And, you know, college, the game can shift so quickly. I remember when I was coaching college baseball, you know, leads would change all the time. So if we could kind of put the put a hatchet in someone early on, and have our pitchers in the first three innings be lights out by a good preparation process, that would be great. And now you guys have the data and, and you know your processes to show that too. You can talk to the pitcher and say, you know, um, your routine needs to get needs to be better because you're down in an average two miles an hour in the first three innings compared to what you have overall in the game. So it's just you're you're connecting the dots. And we're hoping, you know. Kaylee and I talked about this uh, last week is, is I'm hoping that the more data that we provide, you know, to our coaches, the more data driven they will become, not from a, you know, analysis by paralysis type deal, but just start to, to try to take some of the data that they're seeing from a, from a medical side, from a preparation, you know, from a physical readiness side, from their pitchers, and then try to take some of the normal data that they already are charting each and every day, or if they're not charting to chart that and be able to correlate, you know, if a guy's a 94 arm, you know, arm care score, right. Or he's got, you know, 150 pounds of, of, uh, of um, total strength. What did his pitching metrics look like? You know, did he pitch well? You know, did that Ryan all fired up again? (laughs) (laughs) Amazing. that, That correlate, you know, can we take, you know, just a normal baseball sp- uh, statistic? I was uh, telling Kaylee, I wish I could figure out how to, like, calculate the war for a college pitcher and, yeah. then, and then correlate that to the arm strength, to the arm care, you know, to, to what that looks like and say, okay, well, this guy's war is way up, but his overall strength is low. Damn, he would be even better if we could get him to a certain spot or, 
you know, and now we're starting to look at, I love you guys uh, saying, you're looking at those low hanging fruit, like this guy doesn't need to get that much stronger. We just need to figure out his pitch grips. We need to figure yep. out how to live to have more command. And now we can start to talk about, let's do some core, you know, lumbo pelvic control, some rehab stuff. That's really going to help him. Let's stop focusing so much on, you know, um, internal range of, you know, it, IR range of motion, ER range of motion, stretching, whatever it is, you know, we're all just like diving in on, on random things. Let's, let's take some of these data points and, and, and dive into the things that really need to be um, specific. And I think it's yeah. cool being able to have like this many people on a team that are like focused on doing it and having medical personnel on it, having head coach, having pitching coach, having a bunch of like analytical people in on it is like, we're able to sit here and focus on range of motion, strengthening this, that, and the other. And like, basically I'm able to just turn my like athletes who are like in a well, like manicured place over to my pitching coach. So he can worry about pitch grips and, you know, all of those very small, efficient things that he can try to work on and change rather than him having to worry about are they doing their warm up properly? Is this guy hurt? Yes. Can this guy go today? Like, I think that's very important. My, my biggest question is, has been, how do we get, how do we get the crossover on different sports? Because there's just, mm -hmm. you know, I want this to be like volleyball would be awesome because they're, yeah. they're, they're tracking so. tracks, um, you know, ground contacts, vertical jump. Like mm -hmm. we're on that level here where we're, Tracking oh man, you got Croton nodding his head now. But he's yeah. in. <laughs> ground contact. But yeah, was, you got you got you got two measures of absorption. You know, looking at what's going on at the shoulder, and then you're getting landed landing impacts. So that's interesting. I'd love to see the research. You know, based on athletes and uh, in volleyball to see how many jumps they take, so how many swings, and what happens to their throwing arms or their overhand strength. You know, you can probably burn them out, too, because they have higher arm velocities, I think, in, in some ways than pitchers because there's no ball in their hand. Yeah, their arm velocity is going crazy, but they're they're just taking so many swings. I mean, every practice and, yeah. to, be able, and to be able to give them, I would say, I don't think that our volleyball team as a whole, and I may be wrong, you've worked with our volleyball team. I don't think they have a genuine – arm care program no I, I mean we've had we've dabbled in a little bit of like you know we're going to do this every day before practice type of stuff some just like generalized band work but i don't think they've had anything that's like truly dedicated everything's always through lower extremity the focus there so i don't think that there has been a ton of emphasis placed on yeah when i was uh with tom we had usc beach volleyball that would train and do all the arm strength work um they actually got on the way to ball holds croton the usc volleyball team and nice. always like one of the top nice. ball teams that's out there. Right. A lot taller than I am, but you know. Well, AJ, I'll tell you, nice. we have this discussion about other sports at least once a week and it's in the game plan, but we've got to get, we've got to get Android out and there's a few other things that we want to uh, get I, first. I totally, yeah. I but totally it's happen. It. No, it's, it's, and, and I think the updates that you guys, oh, I yeah. mean, that was some massive updates that you guys threw out there as far as just the score and, 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 and you guys have understood how to tap into like the psyche of athletes. I'll say baseball players, but athletes just in general and, and the new age athlete that we deal with, you know, being able to see that big score, 94, what's a goal, you know, what their goal is being able to, you know, just kind of have that landing page that tells them what to do. And, and like I said, my whole deal was, it didn't matter how much money we had. Could we get them to buy in mm -hmm. and, and, and how user-friendly is and how quickly can an athlete mess it up? And um, they haven't been able to. I mean, no. it's, it's mainly just, will you do it? But other than that, it walks, it's so user-friendly from an athlete standpoint. Like, I, I think every day that I go to a baseball facility with my son, I probably talk about the arm care app, not because I'm trying to pump up what we're doing and some new technology, right? Because I'm not that dad, but... I talk about it because it's so great. <laughs> you know, it's just such a great tool, um, even for the lay person to like get dialed in with their kids and stop having all these arm injuries that, you know, they can't, they don't understand how to control. They have no measurable to, 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 to really dial in what's going on. That's awesome. Hey, listen, you guys, this has been great. I appreciate it. I can't wait to, um, 
check in with you guys as, as the season goes on and next year. I know we've talked about um, potentially rolling some other things out, which I definitely want to pursue with you. But um, Kaylee, AJ, um, this has been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen F. Austin, for um, everybody there for at least uh, understanding the potential here. And um, until next time. Yeah, and be, be aware, you know, if you're, if you're a high school senior, high school junior, it really narrows your school choice down to two. You can either go to Vanguard University, who's also using the arm care platform, or SFA, because they're going to take care of those places. So obviously, the number one choice is always Vanguard, okay. and calls it the Ivy League of the West Coast, but yes. SFA is a great option as well. So, <laughs> Axum. Yeah, thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Thank you it. guys. Appreciate it.